I just made 5 extra batteries for my Mavic Mini, extending my flight time to over 3 hours. Make sure to watch till the end to find out exactly how I did it. Let's get going. Hi guys, it's Zoli here. I hope you are having a great day. In today's video I'm going to show how I made 5 extra batteries for my Mavic Mini. If you haven't seen my earlier videos on the subject, please watch them, because without it this will not make too much sense. So as you see I removed the original connector from the PCB, I will need it later, and now I'm removing the green wire which I used for power transfer between the battery pack and the drone. This I will not need now. So I took four pins from a male header and now I'm going to solder this uh, connector to those male headers. As you can see the two middle pin which is going to be the positive are connected to the two middle pin also and then these are the ground connections. The pitch is not the same, the connector is two millimeter and the header is two and a half but it works just fine. Now I'm just going to connect another 4 pin header to this and that will be my data communication port later on, you will see it. And there will be a connection schematic to it, so don't worry. So the 2 middle goes to 1 pin on this additional row and that's the ground pin and the 2 sides are going to be used for something else. As you see the bottom one is bent outwards, downwards. And now I'm going to connect that to the data pin on the original connector. Yeah, just like that. And uh, off camera I'm going to connect the other one also on the left side to the very left pin on the original connector. So this is how the adapter looks so far. I'm going to use some, of course, my trusty super glue again with a piece of paper. I'm going to cover those holes on the back of the original connector because I don't want any other glue to go, go into that. Just like that. Because I'm going to use some epoxy resin to make this whole adapter more sturdy. And of course, if that epoxy would go into those holes and block up the connector pins, that would be just disastrous. So I just trim off the unnecessary paper here. And here comes the schematic I've told you about. You can pause this if you need. Original connector pins, the first row of header. These are the positive and negative terminals. The second row, and it is connected this way. So now I'm going to fill up the gaps between the pins with some UV resin just to make sure that there will be no shorts plus that this adapter becomes more sturdy. And from the inside also. Oh, the 90s disco style. Alright, so here is the battery. This is how I connected the series now. And you see I'm using two layers of Captain tape between the cells and for every insulation. This is the connector I'm using on the battery. It's KF2510 if you look at it on eBay or Amazon. I think uh, JST connector would work just as well, but uh, this is what I had at home. So the two middle pins I'm gonna be positive and the two outer ones are the negative. This is how it will be, and this is how it will fit on the battery. Nice. Super glue, yet again. I'm just gonna glue it on the battery, just so that it doesn't move around. You see, Captain Tape everywhere. You can say I'm paranoid with this uh, isolation, insulation, things, but it's very important with these batteries, I think. So I'm gonna solder on the positive terminal. If you have difficulty to, to put solder on the battery cells, just scrape them with some sharp object. 
then the thing the thing can easier catch on it and then the negative terminal is also soldered you see the gap between the two cables i'm just going to insert a piece of cardboard there it's just one of those safety precautions as i said i'm very respectful with these batteries i know what they can do now those for sure are not going to short so to make this whole th sealed i'm just going to use some of the uv resin also fill up between the pins and cables and wires and everywhere and give it a good flash with the uv torch It's a really amazing substance, this uh, UV resin, I really like it also. So this is done. Now, of course, I would like to make this look a little bit nicer. So I bought some shrink wrap. And uh, here I'm going to show you a trick. I actually cut the shrink wrap apart because it was too big. And this is just one sheet. And I don't know if you knew it, but you can actually just super glue the shrink wrap together. And as you heat it up, it will shrink, but if you position this glued seam in the right location, where it does not have to shrink too much, it works fantastic. You will see. So right now I'm making a 2, which is obviously much smaller than the one I had. It works with other shrink wraps also, I've used it a lot of times. So this is from my wife, a little hair dryer kind of something. And they say man has nothing to do with the beauty industry. Of course we have. Like uh, shrink wrapping things. So I actually put the seam with the gluing on the left side, on the very edge. And it, you see it just works fine. I'm going to cut off the excess. This whole uh, shrink wrapping thing is actually not essential for uh, for the project to work. I just want to make it nice and maybe, you know, maybe to take the drone with me on, a, on an aircraft uh, so they don't think I'm a terrorist. It looks much, much better. So now I cut a strip here. This is going to be basically a ring and I force the battery inside like this. And I'm going to sh just shrink this plastic on it as well. As you see on the sides it will not shrink quite nice and the reason for this is that these hard edges have to be removed. Afterwards it will be nice again. Because of these edges it couldn't shrink more on the sides of the battery. But I just give it another quick push. You see? It just stretches out now this is of course not waterproof it just simply looks much nicer and now i'm going to just cut a small entrance for the connector and that is all what is being exposed i quite like this uh, format to be honest that's the battery and then comes the adapter now connecting this adapter you have to be very careful of course because you can short the battery everything has to go into the right pin. All right, to the PCB. The temperature sensor is unnecessary because this is going to be outside of the drone anyways. So I'm just going to replace it with a 10K resistor that is going to set the temperature measurement to a good room temperature. Because these are variable resistors, basically these temperature sensors. So it's soldered in. And then the positive terminal where I remove the green cable from has to be connected, of course, to the positive terminal because that's where, via this wire, the voltage regulator gets its supply voltage. So don't forget to put that in. And if you have noticed, I cut off the ends of the PCB because they are absolutely unnecessary and they just extra weight and extra size. These four wires I'm using to connect the battery board to the adapter I'm going to use green as one of the data connections the yellow is going to be the negative terminal 
orange is going to be the positive and red is going to be the other data communication. So this board is going to get the supply voltage from the drone and of course the data communication goes back and forth between them. Yes, the super glue again. I just glue this because this is going to be the surface how I mount this board to the drone. So I don't want this cable to get loose. Now I take some 400 grit sandpaper and I'm going to adjust the adapter because as you see it's quite bulky there. So for me to able to to be able to close the door on the drone I had I have to file it down like this. That's nice. And then I cut off four pieces from a female header, which I'm going to use as a connector and just send it off also. So that part is done. And I solder it to the other end of the ribbon cable. So my starter unit is basically ready. I am just going to fill up between the pins with some UV resin to make sure that there will be no shorts there, plus to make it a little bit more sturdy. Alright, let's see how it fits. So battery, this is the adapter, plugging it in, then comes the starter, which is basically the brains of the battery, externally connected. And then I stick it in the drone. And yes, it sticks quite well. And the door is closed. I don't see how this battery would fall out like this. But of course one can always put some Velcro on the door also to make sure that it's, it's locked. And that is going to be like that on the top of the drone with some Velcro. I ended up uh, gluing the four corners of the Velcro to the PCB with some super glue to make sure that it doesn't come off, but it's quite a neat arrangement, I think. You see, it pops out the better. It's, it's quite, quite well connected there. Let's see how it goes. So I made a few batteries, as you see, I was busy. The one which is not in cell wrap was the original cells, the Samsung cells. All the rest is this Sony VTC6 cells. And now I'm just going to do a little testing how it goes. You have seen this in my earlier videos. We are waiting for the startup sequence. It gets red, then I press the button. The microcontroller on the PCB starts to do its job. And then when the green light's coming, I'm ready to take off with the drone. Yes, I'm gonna speed this up here. I'm just gonna do one landing and one take off again, just so that you can see that it just works as it should. Telemetry is in, it's working. I showed it in other videos before. Watch them if you haven't seen them. Now I'm going to just test a few batteries. How it is on the field when you land, because your battery is depleted, you go up, walk up to the drone, take out the battery, and then just replace it with another one. So that's off. Reconnect put it in and each and every time when I disconnect this starter this brain section from the battery the PCB is going to sense its new voltage it will adjust to it automatically so it's a, it's pretty neat actually so this is the second battery and as you see it, it works great no problems with it same thing speed up do landing, take off again so that it works. That was quite a shoot, but all right, so it works. I'm gonna land. And you see the indicators on the bottom of the drone actually show properly the the proper charge. I'm just gonna do a third one, just to be sure. But you see, it's it's quite easy to swap batteries and and just start the drone again. It's, uh, this cable is never in the way, it will never hit the, 
the props the velcro is quite good on the top of the drone everything works normal perfect I'm gonna land and take off and that was it for this one now you remember I told in the end of the earlier video that that I want to see how I can disable though the this forced auto landing function and basically what I came up with is to connect this whole I call it the starter or the brains connect it with another wire which has which I on purpose I made the connector at the end more loose so it's easier to pull off from the pins you will see just in a moment why so same procedure otherwise now I just put in the factory battery whatever it doesn't matter which one same same thing same startup cycle and now after takeoff my idea is to remove this whole assembly from the drone so from there on there is actually no battery PCB in the drone that's all close the lid there we go and as I said earlier in my videos the drone is going to fly as long as it has juice in it because uh, yeah it doesn't matter if there is a an error indicated on the on the remote control that the battery data communication malfunction but but the drone flies and like this it is not able to sense and uh, the battery voltage in that manner so that it does the forced auto landing Important to note that other functions like low battery warning and critically low battery warnings are still working. So if I use the drone like this, of course I know I have roughly half an hour flight time, but I still get the low battery warning. So there is a warning from which I know that, okay, I have around six, seven minutes of flight time left. So time to get home. So it just works fine. And like this, you can really maximize the flight time of one battery pack. Let's see the weight limit. Unfortunately, like this, we go out of the 250 grams limit, but hey, we have nearly infinite flight time. Something for something. Stay tuned for electronics projects like this DIY charger for the batteries, which you just saw or this AT Tiny 85 programmer based on an Arduino Nano. Maybe you're interested in a fireworks firing system which is programmable, extendable and completely wireless. Or anything about microcontrollers and wireless communication on many platforms, power electronics or battery DIYs, or just simple project for beginners to help fall in love with the hobby, the beauty of electronics, and much, much more. Guys, if you have any questions or anything to say, please leave them in the comment section. I'm really interested to know what you want to see or what do you think about my channel. I will continue uploading videos every Thursday. So stay tuned for everything. And how about a like, share or maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.